million sent from other space That's who I be Sing with a message for the human race That's who I be I'm an alien sent from other space That's who I be Hello aliens! MJ Baker here Welcome to the Alien Nation show And I am your host MJ Baker And we have a so phenomenal We have now. a phenomenal person He is a great comrade of my friend musical i don't know what you call it cohort uh singer songwriter musician producer composer chris williams and the crowd goes wild <laughs> what's going on <laughs> what's up mj hello chris say hello to the aliens of the universe alien nation what's up yes <laughs> okay, so Chris, before we get started with the show, I do this with all the guests. Alien is an acronym, so I want you to tell me, um, I'm going to tell you what the acronym means, and then tell me which one of the letters, if if so, if more than one, um, or if all of them associate to where you are right now in this season of your life. So alien is an acronym for authentically living, intrinsically evolving naturally. The whole thing. <laughs> Honestly, the whole really? thing. That's really where I'm at right now. Yeah. Tell us, tell me, please, please, please share. How do you feel like, okay, the authentically living, intrinsic, like explain how that fits into your life right now right now i mean i think i reached that stage um i'm getting ready to be 40 next year so it's like when you get to that age it's a lot of stuff you kind of just like either this is what i'm sticking with or this is what i'm you know evolving from and i'm mm -hmm. kind of in that process of what i'm evolving from so it's just like a lot of things it's just you know it's not an overnight process but just i'm being able to monitor my own growth right now so i can see where i'm progressing so that's why i feel like i identify with the whole thing that is dope because you don't hear um too many people saying that they are monitoring their growth like being so so that means you're going through a process of being more self-aware like yeah definitely more aware so how has like you know learning how to be your authentic self how do you feel that it is um, benefiting or affecting where you are right now as an artist and as a creative? Like, it's um, believe it or not, it's giving me a lot more confidence than I had in years past. It's like I believe more so now than ever in what I'm doing mm -hmm. and what my capabilities are, and I'm able to kind of validate myself on that. So. Um, that's kind of like where it is. This is like, you know, this is pretty much the way of the direction I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, and I have the confidence in my abilities to be able to try and make it successful. As an artist, you, you came out, you started, you know, you write your own stuff, you put your music together, you put it out there. And, but you, I also, every couple of years, I feel like you quit. Like you would, like you'd be like, fuck the world. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna get, uh, no, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, this is too, like, like my, my stuff is, is too good and y'all not appreciating it. So I'm, I'm done. And so how do you come out of that place to where you are now? Because I feel like what you just said was, I am now so sure in myself that I'm just going to continue moving forward in this vein and go on this journey and see where it takes well, me. Well, in my defense, I think everybody has that uh, I quit moment. I may have had mine a little more than other people. I, I can I can eat that. <laughs> but, but, you know, you get, sometimes it does get, you know, a little frustrating, you know, when you, you know, believe in, it's not necessarily just you believing in your own vision, mm -hmm. but trying to get other people to buy into it as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of people to try to believe in taking this journey with you 
and you got some that either try to mold your vision into theirs or try to paint your your, your story a different way than right. how you would want to paint it. Yeah. And then as you know, for me, I, I think that's what also helped me just staying on subject. What also helped me is help me with evolving as a producer. Because at this point, if I can't trust you to paint the way I want to do it, then, you know, I take the time to kind of learn it myself to be able to, you know, kind of got my own direction. And right. it's just, you know, being happy, having the right people around you. Sometimes it's also your surroundings. Yeah. The thing that inspired me the most is when I started traveling, when I started going up north, when I started making connections with, you know, people outside of, you know, where I am. Because that can be discouraging because it seems like sometimes, and it may be true for other artists in their hometown, everybody is like trying to ride the same way. Everybody's trying to go around the same circle. Everybody's trying to do the same thing. So you present something different. They don't necessarily know, not necessarily how to take it. Like I was signed to an independent label that didn't necessarily know how to market my sound. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing, you know, no, no, you know, no disrespect towards them or nothing, you know, ill towards them. It's just that, you know, Sometimes when you're not used to dealing with something that's unique, you try to put it in the same box as everywhere else. So for me, it just over time, even in the midst of quitting and all the other stuff, you know, it was also strategizing, also traveling, also looking at different things, seeing, okay, what lane do I fit in? Mm -hmm. And then just evolved into trying to find the lane that I fit in into right. creating my own. So I think that's the difference, the evolution, you know, and all just, you know, going from being frustrating, being frustrated by not fitting mm -hmm. in a certain mold that you feel that you have to in order to be recognized or whatever, right. to building your own and people recognizing you for whatever, for being different. At when least. did you get yeah. to the place where you were comfortable, you know, with your own lane? And just saying, okay, I'm gonna work from here. Um, honestly, it it that came from traveling. Um, I took a chance. Um, for my birthday it was a couple of years ago, maybe about four or five years ago. I went to New York, and the first year I just went to just to check out the scene, just to you know get away from the city. Just so the next year I came back, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go perform. I'm gonna find an open mic, and I'm maybe even do a cover or whatever, and just see where I fit to see if it works. And went down to Harlem, did this open mic. And it was in, you know, everybody when you knew, you know, you knew something, everybody's going to give you that. Oh, yeah, you did great. Yeah, love. Right. But what's funny is like the connections I built just from that one meeting, just from that one, you know, that one opportunity. And then a lot of opportunities started working from that. So it's just like not necessarily saying that, oh, maybe it's just because, you know, it's New York or something. It just inspired me to okay, if you're able to hang outside of your normal, if you're able to hang outside of your city with what you have, then you have something and you need to work from there. Yeah. So it gave me that confidence once I stepped out of what people were already used to hearing and tired of hearing and really couldn't appreciate because they couldn't understand to going somewhere where they accepted to us like, okay, now I got something I can work. I have something I know now right. that I can use to work with. So, you know, I just, you know, Maybe it was the pat on the back or, you know, just that extra push and motivation. But sometimes you just need to try your move somewhere else and see where that fits. If it fits somewhere else, then it just, you know, if it don't work nowhere, it don't work. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Like, that's a lot of things, you know. Uh, that's one thing, you know, staying on top of it. But, it's, you know, this it ties in. That's a lot of things with most people who have when they leave the city. Well, when they leave their hometown, mm -hmm. they go somewhere else. And it's like you're in the same position you were in before you left. Now, when right. you start off, you know, obviously, you know, you don't know anybody. You have to kind of build that up. But if over time you've left and you're the same level you are where you stayed, then it's just meant for you to be at that level <laughs> or right. none at all. Yeah. You know, so, I mean. So. When you, um, because I remember you went to New York last year, right? Around New Year's, right? And you had your, you, you got, you got featured for a performance. And so how did that, was that one of those moments where you were like, 
I got something. Maybe the people where I live don't recognize I got something, but I got something. Yeah, honestly, that was it. And um, what was even what was even crazy about it's like when I perform here locally, sometimes, you know, I kind of try to be myself as much as possible. So I wear a shawl and a hat or whatever. You don't see most people like me wearing that kind of stuff, especially right. here. And and it's just like feeling this. I mean, of course, I didn't feel as comfortable doing it here, but it was just like, you know, I'm just going to go with me. I'm trying this and seeing how this fits. You know, it ties into what I'm doing musically. And I go up there and it's like, it's almost not necessarily the norm, but it was an acceptance like, you know, like I've never had before. Right. I've grinded I've grinded here in Jacksonville um for about 15, 16 years locally doing music. And I probably got more acceptance in two forty five minute sets <laughs> in one night in New York than I did the entire sixteen years. So, you know, that was, you know, not only inspiring, but it kind of made me focus more on, okay, the world is not only much bigger than your hometown, but your talent is uh, a lot bigger than where you are. are. One thing with technology, the way it is now, is, you know, you don't necessarily have to travel. Yeah. You know, I recorded, um, I recorded on two albums uh, for two artists in New York from right here in this room. Wow. You know, so... You know, it, it so you know that's the the wonderful thing about technology and social media and the way the world is now is that you don't necessarily have to uproot yourself, right? Right. You know, but at the same time, I would love the experience of living in another city again. You know. Yeah. So you just mentioned you did a recording, like recording vocals. Did you write? Like, so mm -hmm. are you now? extending your services to you know writing producing rather oh yeah absolutely i'm i'm definitely open for business now you know um okay it's one of those things that you know when you when you do fall off or do take a sabbatical or whatever you know the best thing is to why you're doing that is not necessarily get away from things but to get into new things learn new things yeah. So I'm learning production a lot better, learning arrangement better, you know, even engineering, um, learning a lot of my stuff, you know, as far as like recording and everything like that. So now that I've, I've pretty much, you know, improved in that area, then I can extend my services, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I, I can agree that um, working for other people outside of yourself and um, because that's something that like the other side of my business outside of being an artist is writing and arranging for other artists. And I think that has helped me tremendously stretch because, you know, learning how to, you know, like you ain't gonna stack vocals on a pop song the way you would stack them on an R&B song or, right. you know, um, you not gonna, uh, you may not do two, three al alto parts, you know, on an R&B song, but you might, you'll do it on a, a church song or a worship song or, you know, just different things like that. Just, you know, learning to be more flexible and to move differently. So, yeah. That's one thing I also had to learn too, because um, I had a habit of almost approaching every song the same way Yeah. for other artists, Me but, too. And my and in my defense, it was like you know, well, you want to work with me, you know my style of music, you should know what to expect or know. Well, I would feel like you know, well, if you're gonna put me on a track like this, you should already know that I'm gonna come with harmonies, I'm gonna come with this, blah blah blah. Right. blah. So you know, with one hand, it's like okay, you should know the artist you're working with, but on the other hand, it's like. You should know the artist you're working with. Correct. You should understand the feel you're not, of what yeah. they're trying to do. Yeah. You know, because so, it's not, you know, and that's one thing I had to learn. It wasn't like I'm trying to take over a record. It's just that I knew only my style. And I figured that anybody who wanted to work with me wanted to work with me based on my style. Right. Sometimes that's not always the case. And it's not necessarily a downgrade to you. Some people just want to sing on their hook. 
you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because they can't sing it themselves. It, it's right. not like, it's not like, you know, well, I don't want you to do you. Yeah, you know, I just I just want you to do this. And I get that. And that's not a right. that's not an insult or a down shot to me. Because nine times out of ten, you're paying me for it. So hey. I mean, and, and, and <laughs> I cook and, your food how you want it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for me, and for me, I definitely have had where I just kind of like say to um like I put more on the track and then I tell the client, chop it up. Right. I'm going you 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 go get 21 stems for me. You are. Right. You, you go find get, something you can use on there. Right, right. <laughs> and and I'm going to put a whole lot of ad libs. I'm going to do all of that and then right. you chop it up. You know, and then I've I I have had clients where I thought I did a monster of a job. I thought it was oh, great. And then they send me back their final cut. And it's just <laughs> they don't chop. They don't. They they only use seven, <laughs> right, of the stems, and I'm like, okay, you know, it's like right. you have to, because you, it's like, because you have to go into, I'm offering a service to somebody, and they are my client. I have to think differently. I have to receive right. differently. You know, yeah. So I totally get uh, where you at right now. I was in that same position, but then I was like, dang, dang, you like what I did. But then when I heard the album, not just my son, when I heard the actual album, I said, okay, I understand. It's right in line with everything else. So yeah, I get definitely. It. And so do you feel like um, with this growth and this expansion and this area that you're in, because I do believe, I like talking to people like you, Chris, because I don't just ask anybody to be on the show. It's like certain people that come to my mind because I oh. feel like, yeah, for real, seriously. And because I feel like uh, this is a season where there's an awakening of either we're going to be our authentic, either you're going to agree to be your authentic self or you're just not. And And I think that if we agree to be our authentic selves and say, I'm not weird. I'm just me. And this is right. how I roll and this is who I am. And and as you have expanded, because that's what it sounds like you're expanding and you're evolving and you're growing, have you found that there have been some people that are not rocking with you? You know, absolutely. Have you lost <laughs> people? Have you lost people through this, you know, journey that you've embarked on? Some I lost, some I walked away from. Mm -hmm. Either way, it turned out to be the best decision, you know, on both ends. Because sometimes some people can represent situations in your life that you just evolved from that you that just don't exist no more, you know. And it's like if I run into you, if I run into you, and the first thing I hear about is, you know, shit that I did. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut, yeah, but uh. He cuts on YouTube. Sorry. Okay. Nice. But stuff that I, you know, things that I've done like three or five years ago or whatever, five or seven years ago. And oh, I remember you did this, blah, 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 blah. Mentioning nothing about where I'm at now. Right. Uh, or, or, you know, anything like that. And it's just like, you know, I get it. People remember you certain ways. But for me personally, I have to stay away from those people. Mm. Because it's like, if that's your image of me and it's not going to change, then obviously, you know, it, nothing that I've done to grow and enhance myself, whatever you ever see that, it will ever matter to you. Right. So you would be the one that would try to talk me out of certain decisions that I got to make. So I just rather talk myself out of you. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have lost a lot of followers, a lot of friends, a lot of people, you know. And people can think of whatever and say whatever and feel whatever, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, all I got is me. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think that is really important because, you know, when I decided, when I made the decision to um, move to Charlotte, to leave Jacksonville, you know, um, 
I had began, I didn't, I didn't even realize until later, but when I said I'm moving to Charlotte last year, just saying it to myself, saying it to God, me and God having a conversation, that is when things, relationships, you know, situations started transitioning and I had to let it happen. I had to um, just kind of, you know, ride that wave and, and be like, man, you know, I, I miss you, but I'm glad you're gone. (laughs) Like, uh, or, or sometimes it's like, dang, I I wish I could call you, but I can't because you, you're not even going to understand. And, and, and when I, even when I left, I only told a, handful of people like that I was going I I literally so so it was like when I left and and it's people still think I live in Jacksonville people still (laughs) think I'm there and that's fine y'all can think now right but the I mean I, I think the point of the matter is is that we always have to go through that process of losing to gain and um you know, the effects of that on us. And do you, do you feel like, you know, has this process for you, like this growth outside of the music, what other areas has this evolution affected, like um, outside of your musical career? (laughs) Everything, honestly, Um, my decision making, you know, even how I'm spending money. How I'm hanging with certain people, how I deal with certain family members, how I let people talk to me, how I let people handle me, you know. And um, some may say it's for the worse. You know, I feel it's for the better because I can stand on those decisions now. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, the only person I worry about offending is me. Find out what your why is, like why you do what you do. Honestly, I mean, yes and no. And I say no because I feel like I'm still finding it out. I still feel like that this is leading to a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like, you know, sometimes God will put you in a situation on the platform to really live out your purpose. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and he'll put you in a situation to where he'll make it feasible. Mm-hmm. So people, more people will receive me, or more whatever my purpose is, whatever I'm supposed to do, it'd be more receptive to people because of this platform, right? You see what I'm saying? So, so, well, but as far as the yes of that question is, it's like it's something that I've rekindled to me. The reason I've always wanted to do it, and it's as simple as it sounds. I want to hear what I would it would sound like on the record to see if I can actually put one together, you know, mm. and see who I can reach. And the the way that some of the songs that I used to listen to when I was younger uh, used to like really move me. Mm. I'd get moved me to tears and dancing. Yeah. I want to see if I got something that can do that can do that for somebody Same. else. Yeah. You know? And I I think that's I think I think that's beautiful because I am learning my why as well and I think we get our why mixed up with the vehicle for the why like I feel like the music the songwriting is the vehicle that God uses to promote the why and so it's like who are we speaking to you know um when somebody hears your music, you know, or, or just, or watches this interview, you know, a part of all of this is the why, you know, um, how are we trying to really know who you are? And then also you, you kind of agree with this persona. So I agree with the good church girl persona because that's all I know. Right. And then you also felt like that's the box you had to stay in to get where you need to go. Correct. And 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 that's the thing, like it don't like I was <laughs> I was in that box that I was like, 
unbeknownst to anybody, I was miserable. I hated them little fedoras. And oh my god! Shirt I was just jeans. about to say Chris used to wear them little hats, and I used to be like, "Why?" I hated. I hated them. I had dreads. I wanted to show my dreads. Well, I hated them. You used to have them little hats on, Chris, and them two two big suits. <laughs> Y'all, he said he's oh. I'm glad there are no I pictures. Thought that, that was exists. you. I didn't know they were forcing, you know, not forcing you, but you see how I dress like outside of it, right? Yes. Like... <laughs> Dude. Now, I mean, and, and, and the thing about it was just like, you know, again, when you naive and you just want to get hurt, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll just go along with whatever to try to get there. And the thing that made me fall off with them. Well, I won't say follow up. Well, we ended up working with. I didn't renew my contract. Um, I had a direct. I had a different direction for what I wanted for my next project. You know, I wanted to be more of what I was doing. You know, I wrote all the music for the first album, but like I wrote all the lyrics from a musical standpoint. You know, it was good. Elijah Paris is a wonderful producer. Yeah. You know, but I wanted again this whole thing. This whole dream of mine was to see what I, how I would fare doing it, and you know when you got a label that's putting money behind it and everything like that. Obviously, you got to you know give the season what seasons. So I understood, but at the same time, it was just like it's never going to be an authentic record if I don't do it. Right. At least do it the way I want to do it. At least use the people that I want to. You know, and it wasn't like we fell out. But at the same time, it was just like, okay, I have, I'd rather be back independent. And if it take me a while, it'll take me a while. Yeah. It has taken me a while, but I'm still happy about it because the way it's coming together is exactly how I envisioned it. Right. And because you can't trade that. Right. Because it's you and it's nobody else. And you are, you know, able to kind of control your sound. And I get that. I really get that. Especially when you know a little bit more now and you right. and and your knowledge has expanded. You know, it's just like with me, like people have been asking me, Well, why did you reproduce Midnight Dreaming? That it's that's a classic song. And why are you why are you gonna remake other songs? And I said, Because I didn't like the production on them in the first place. I was just I was just I was like because that. I was immature. I was I I and I wasn't confident. I didn't I didn't even know how to say do you know what I'm saying? Like this is what I want to hear because I didn't know the things that I know now. And so right. now that I'm like how you talked about earlier, exposure and mm -hmm. getting exposed to like when you said, Hey, when I went to new markets. And I people heard my stuff in new markets and that that exposed me to something different. And and for me, hanging out with, you know, people who have Grammys and producing stuff and who mm -hmm. have who are on, you know, like one of my I mean, we're we're not friends, we're we're music cohorts, but you know. He was one of the um musicians on Hamilton. Like he he did that every night. Wow. And, and you know, and to to get uh input from these people and to you know start learning things musically and he and then them expose saying, Hey, check out this artist, check this out, check this out. Duh, duh, duh. And now mm -hmm. and then to be like, Oh, this is how I really wanted it to sound. You know, right. this is what I really wanted from the project. And so I had to tell people I really wanted it to sound a certain way. I know that you like it, but I don't like it. That's yeah, I'm I'm with you. Listen, I'm with you. I felt the whole I felt that same way about and this is probably like the first time I've said this like in an interview or whatever, but I felt that same way about my whole first project, except for two songs. But really, except for one, because well, no, I say two, because I had more input on those. But 
everybody else just tell me how they love this song, they love that, and I'm like, why? They're like, why don't you perform it this way? I perform it that way. I can do it the way that I've always wanted to do it. You know, I'm grateful for how it came out, but it's just like at the same time, it's like not necessarily me. It's like somebody painting a picture of you, and everybody else can see how it reminds you them of you, and then you look at it like that ain't me. <laughs> but I will say this the best thing that also happened to me not just with the exposure um, the best thing that happened was I was surrounded by people who taught me the things that I needed to know and got away from the people who clowned me for not knowing the things that I needed to mm. That's good. and that is something that I would say I stand behind it when I say it, especially in this city. And I'm not just down in Jacksonville because I'm sure there's a Jacksonville everywhere. Right, right, definitely. You know, so everybody, people, I'm sure people in their hometown, even if people from Los Angeles, California may feel the same way. But the people, some people will rather knock you or down you for quote unquote not being as talented as gifted as they think you should be, rather than tell you the things that you can do to improve. Right. I'm not the best guitar player in my city, but understand this. Um every instrument that I play, I play self taught. I didn't have these quote unquote mentors. I didn't have people I sat under, even in church. All my organ playing and keyboard playing, all my own chords, I taught myself. Mm. They came from my ear. They didn't, I didn't, and some of them I play backwards, which is cool because, you know, it works. But a lot of stuff that I've been able to do, guitar, drums, bass, keys, you know, even vocally, it's always been just me. I didn't have vocal coaches. I didn't have vocal trainers. I didn't have people I sat under. I didn't have other musicians that the tag alone, you know, the, the tag behind, or you know, the to ride anybody's coattails, or to even just show me stuff. I didn't right. have any of that. It was me, and what I learned, I passed on to my little brother, who actually produces stuff himself. Oh wow! But, yeah, yeah. But you know, um, I'm I take so I take pride. And a lot of that, when it comes to me, I take pride in my music. I get sensitive about it. I get defensive about it. Sometimes I may even rant and rave on Facebook like everybody else do about it. But it's because I'm I'm so passionate about something that I had to get out the mud myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I really had to get it out the mud. I didn't have nobody co-signing me. You see what I'm saying? So I popped up on the scene. I didn't, even as a church musician, how Majority of most local music scenes are just a bunch of church musicians who get together and try to form a band. Right. That's why none of them can fight. But that's another story. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but no, but no, <laughs> so, but I didn't have a clique or a crew when I came. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So most of my friends that I grew up with, they were selling drugs. Mm-hmm. They weren't, you know, playing music, you know. There was a few, but not a lot was playing music, you know. I had friends that I grew up in high school with that was selling dope that I got older and found out they actually played music. Like, wait, you can play a bass? Yeah, here's the stuff you find out, you know. So that's why I'm a, I'm very prideful with and I'm very, you know, observed with my progression because, and I'm grateful for it too. And, you know, I appreciate the critique and, and the constructive criticism that they try to call and some of the hate I appreciate it all because it means I'm making some type of way and being able to be surrounded by people who actually want to help me grow my girl and just like you people who've been there people who played for people people who've been on these tours you know people who've sung with you know legends in the biz you know and legends in general you know having those people in my corner really is you know I felt it's been real essential in my goal yeah because i think it's i mean i think it's super important for us to um to be sponges because that's the only way we can grow right is to is to be sponges so i think i think that's really cool what you're saying because 
I feel like what you're saying is a part of the process is when you get to a certain place, you start, your eyes become open to who is around you mm -hmm. and who are your enemies and who, who, who are for you and who are not for you. And I know for me, that has definitely been, um, you know, my prayer. Okay, Lord, because see, I, I, I used to be like, <laughs> uh blissfully ignorant right i didn't i didn't want to know so i would be like la, 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 la. oh there's a ledge there is there a bird that can carry me over or what you know like <laughs> that was my mindset like is somebody gonna come get me and carry me over to the other side or what and you know, and then there's somebody behind me, like, be moved, pushing me over the edge. And, but what I realize is, like, as you grow, as you get to know yourself more, as you start walking within yourself, you, the people around you, you start going, you're trying to push me off a cliff. Right. Mm -mm. I see you. And then, and then that's when they be like, why you don't call me no more? Why you don't? Cause you're dangerous. Right. right. <laughs> Cause you're dangerous. And no, this is, I can't afford it to. I get a lot of that, you know, and, and you know, it, it don't make me feel mm -hmm. away. Cause I feel like we've been on a lot of people that I've had to fall away from. We've been on the same journey. We've been on the same path. And one of us got to, somebody got to grow from this. Somebody yeah. got to change, you know, and if you're not trying to go together, then what's the point even, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm still cool. Hey, you want to play PS5 and play 2K? We can. But when it comes to me having to do this, okay, I got to log off and I got to handle this and I got to leave you where you at. Right. Definitely. And I, I think I think that's that's a major thing is leaving people where they are. And just res like like respecting it, I ain't mad. I ain't mad. Right. Just gotta leave you where you at. Right, and I think that's the key part too: not being mad, not being angry at somebody for not mm -hmm. wanting to take the journey with you. It uh -huh. just wasn't meant to go. Yeah. And everybody that you meet is essential to your life. It is essential. I have to remind you of where you are, where you need to grow from, or where you need to grow to. So nobody you meet is by mistake, no matter how much you want to believe that. We can wish we never met some people, but you needed to. Yeah. To get to where you are. So. so Chris, what are you working on right now? Anything that you can tell us, anything that you can share with us. I have been I have been sworn to secrecy. But I will okay. say that I am going to I am going to put something out here before the end of this year. Okay. All right, aliens. He has until December 31st. Two days huh? after my birthday. He said before the end of the year. You said before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. But it's we'll a secret. Get something out. But it's a secret. Yeah. Hmm. But we are working on a lot of stuff though for for twenty three. Um, uh, by twenty three, I, I do I will have the album out. I won't say I plan on. I will have the full album out that I have been promising for years and years and years. But it's actually going to happen. But we've also got a lot of other things that's going to be coming with that too. So okay. I mean, hopefully okay. we'll see how those we'll see what that acting look like. <laughs> Okay, okay. Visuals. You guys, I think he's gonna come out with a music video. Ah, yeah. I said. Hey, hey, I, I can said. get in shape too, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, I have appreciated our time. Like, I feel like your journey is a lot of people's journey when it comes to, you know, being at the beginning stages of evolution, evolving, you know, cutting things off, moving forward. Um, and at the same time, 
growing because everybody don't need to know your business. So you can keep your secret, but just make sure after you can say your secret, you come back to the alienation and tell us what it is and what you I will. Because we want to know. So tell everybody how they can follow you, um, your socials, email, whatever you want to give us, emails, websites. All right. Um, I'm Chris Williams Music on on Facebook, uh, um, Twitter, and Instagram is Chris Soul Singer. Oh, and I have a TikTok. Don't laugh at me because uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I figured that out. I'm old, but it's Chris Soul Singer um, on TikTok. We're putting a lot of those little videos that y'all like doing that, and you know, posting some whereabouts, posting some music. Once I you know get the hang of it, but. Yeah, Chris Soul Single on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and Chris Williams Music on Facebook. All right. Thank you, Chris, so much for sharing your journey with us, your journey of evolution, journey of learning to live authentically, and to allow what is intrinsically in you to come out of you to share it with the world. And so we appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother. And we look forward to our exclusive. You got till December 31st, you said, before the end of the year. I got you. Thank you, MJ. I really appreciate you. All right. Love you. Love you too. See you soon. All right.